I know that there's a big culture of computer gaming, you know. And, and actually, a thought that went through my mind is that if there's any person on Earth that deserves the ability to play a fantasy computer game, it's a kid who can't move his arms and legs anymore. Crap, crap, crap. I played video games ever since I was a wee lad. <laughs> I got into computers, you know, just like tinkering around with hardware because I wanted to make my games run faster. The old cliche of, you know, you'll rot your mind playing all that. I don't think that that's, you know, necessarily true in these, in these days. Oh. During my freshman year here at the university, I took a class called Gaming for the Greater Good. You know, I, I always had this notion of um, we should, in our classes, do projects that have a strong social context. We are going to Eastern's Autism Collaborative Center, the center that they have for um, working with patients uh, across the autism spectrum. I teach a software engineering class and I teach an introduction engineering class. My students need to work on real projects. So I can come up with some contrived projects or we can come up with projects that do something good. So this is PATH. The idea behind it is very simple. So you have a, a path displayed on screen, and what you're supposed to do is just follow it with whatever uh, body part you choose. Right now we, we offer either hand, either foot, either knee, either elbow, or your head. So the idea is, let's see if I can do this here, uh, is just to follow it like that. And it's pretty simple, and we like to think it's pretty fun. Our goal is to kind of improve gross motor control, so over time you can repeat these paths again and again, and you can get you know, finer and finer control over uh, gross motor functions. The landscape is so huge. I mean, there's a lifetime worth of work that, that we could do in, you know, for physical cognitive. There's a lifetime worth of work that we could do just related to autism. Price point for Connect, for example, is a couple hundred bucks. And the price point for therapies and interventions is, is just astronomical. If we could develop even one game that has some therapeutic value and we can demonstrate that empirically, it, I mean, I can't even say enough about what that would be. It would be huge. It's basically, I think it's, you know, this is one of the more important parts of developing games like these. When you're just developing games, you're usually just testing, well, is it fun? Do I, do I hate myself while I play this game? <laughs> and when you're developing games for therapy, there's an extra component that you have to worry about. There's a real human factor. And the only way to get that when you're dealing with a uh, special audience is to actually go out and work with that audience and actually try it with them. The, we don't want to get to like the end of the production cycle and realize that the game has no practical therapeutic value and all the time and energy spent designing the game to be therapeutic is wasted. I hear, I hear yeah. yeah. Two of us. Wow, whole crew. Whole crew. <laughs> all of us are from U of M on uh, the College of Engineering. Hey, I'm on TV. <laughs> Have you, any of you, had experience with individuals with autism? So right now we just finished a demo release, um, which is basically a stable build of everything we had done uh, over the last half a year. Nice job. Now we are working on building a workflow to kind of get more rapid releases done, and we're trying to build up a more stable product that we could eventually say that this is our flagship product right here and that we want to get this into the hospital, we want to get this in the hands of researchers, we want to do this, this, and this with. Make a new game. Is that neat? Yeah, pass. Yeah. A new game. There need to be games that are accessible to everyone um, and a lot of more complicated games that involve social interactions may not be as immediately accessible to kids with autism. One of the hard, I think, parts which Pamela can talk about too is that low muscle tone in their upper body is typical. So it's hard for them. You might have seen William kind of holding here because Can that's the way, the yes, because of the, the, the way their arms were more floppy toned. Okay. Yesterday it sounded like the most valuable thing was getting these kids active and focused for like any length of time. Like, that's what seemed valuable yesterday. Yeah, so it's not necessarily the skill of jumping rope, right. it's just doing something right. physical. It's pretty magical that this class teaches people, you can go out, you can make money, you can work in industry, but you can also do good. And I think, I just think it's really cool.
you know, clearly the, the first goal is to help people. But if we can help people and create a company around helping people so that we can create the next product that helps people, then we're all the better. Part of what we need to learn now is what's the method, what do we have to create in order to commercialize it? Like we have to form a corporation. How do you do that? Don't know. Need to work with, you know, at the University of Michigan, work with the Office of Technology Transfer, work with the Center for Entrepreneurship and figure out how these things happen. How do we get intellectual property protection for these tools and apps? We have to figure that out as well. And so we're working through all of those steps right now. And, and I think, I think the fruit is ripe for the picking. I mean, I think the tools are ready. I think we have all the pieces in place as a university to build those. It's just kind of putting it all together and filling out the forms and just making those parts happen. And that's what we're working through right now. I, I, I think, I feel like we're this close. Connecting? Yeah, yep. That's what the sensor yeah. is up there by the computer. Ready? So it tracks you and it finds, you know, you're going to do it. <laughs> See? You don't even have to do it. It's similar to that.